deal to get a new back. Welcome back to another Division 2 build guide. My name is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and it feels like so long ago that I last posted one of these builds. And wait just a minute. I've got intel from HQ. What's that? It's been how long? What? Well, there we have it. It is confirmed that it has truly been forever since I last posted a Division build guide. Anyways, title update 15 dropped last week and along with it season 9 and we've got new weapons and gear to farm and theory craft. And today, I'm going to be showing you this monster red heart build that is an absolute beast. Before we dive into this build guide, if you aren't yet a sub, please smash that big beautiful subscribe button and ring the bell to stay up to date on all my uploads. So for this Red Heart build, you will want to first start off with the Tactician specialization. Make sure to spec it like what you see on your screens and pay close attention to the weapon areas at the bottom left as you want shotgun, assault rifle, and rifle nodes all maxed out. By unlocking the rifle node, that will instantly unlock the linked laser pointer, which we are going to be using on both our primary weapons. Now this laser pointer instantly pulses targets that we aim at, and since we're going to be using the Heartbreaker gear set, it's it's all about pulsing and collecting all that sweet bonus damage. Now I'd also like to point out that the Tactician is good for more than just the laser pointer, as you do get the dismantling node for plus 12% extra damage to drones, skill proxies, and robotics, which is, you know, useful versus Black Tusk Doggos, and you also get plus one skill tier simply for using this specialization. Now I do pair it with the TDI card custom sidearm for another plus one skill tier, so my skills are plus two without using a single skill core on any of my gear. Now into the build and I'm using the Concealed Breath Mask, which is the Heartbreaker Mask, and I specifically farmed this one for crit hit damage as the attribute. Now since Heartbreaker always drops with armor as the core attribute, you'll need the secondary attribute to already show up whatever it is you're seeking to loot, since you'll be burning your one recalibration to switch the core attribute from armor over to weapon damage. I've added on a max crit hit chance mod to finish this piece off. Next are the gloves, and these are the Heartbreaker Light Touch Gloves with crit hit chance, and I've rolled off armor for weapon damage. Now I experimented with the Contractor's Gloves as well, but this setup you see here was returning the best possible damage output. Here is the Ever Ready Heartbreaker Holster with crit hit chance, and again, I've rolled off armor for weapon damage. For this build, the area that you will need to invest into is critical hit chance, so for the most part, I farmed gear with crit chance already showing up as the attribute. The fourth and final piece of Heartbreaker is the Unflinching Vest, which gives us the four-piece gear set bonus of Heartstopper. Now I looted this piece with crit hit chance as the attribute, rolled on weapon damage, and finished it up with another max crit hit chance mod. Heartbreaker is going to give us plus 15% assault rifle damage, 15% weapon handling, and then the Heartstopper gear bonus. Headshots apply pulse for 5 seconds. Weapon hits on pulsed enemies add a stack of plus 1% bonus armor and 1% damage to pulsed enemies, up to a max of 50 stacks. Two stacks are lost each second. But, don't forget, for the chest piece we also get max BPM on the chest, which increases max stacks for Heartstopper from 50 up to 100, which makes this setup a beast. For the knee pads, I've gone with the Fox's Prayer, named Overlord Armaments Knee Pads, and I've added on plus 12% crit hit damage as the second attribute. Now, despite these knee pads having rifle damage, the plus 8% damage to targets out of cover is why you want to use these on the build, since that damage type is multiplicative and will therefore yield us greater damage returns. For the backpack, I'm using the Seska Gorilla Backpack for the plus 10% critical hit chance bonus for the one piece of Seska. Now this backpack has weapon damage, crit hit damage, headshot damage, and I've added on a max crit hit damage mod as well. 
you know, full disclosure here, my backpack isn't perfectly optimized, and I would have preferred crit chance over headshot damage, but you go with what you've got. I've added on Vigilance as the talent for the plus 25% weapon damage, but I've also experimented with Concussion, which works pretty much the same as Vigilance as long as you can consistently hit headshots, Composure for a little less damage, but if you prefer to cling to cover, and I've also messed around with Bloodsucker for a little extra sustain. It's really up to you, but Vigilance or Concussion, as long as you can hit those headshots, will net you the largest returns. For the weapon, you need to be running with the exotic King Breaker, which has absurdly high base damage, and I've added on plus 10% damage to targets out of cover for even more multiplicative damage. Perfect Flatline adds plus 20% amp damage, which is another multiplicative damage type, to enemies that are pulsed. After two kills, applies pulse to the next enemy you hit. And now you start to see this is why we're using the linked laser pointer, because as soon as we aim at an enemy, it is pulsed. For my secondary weapon, I'm using the named AA-12, a rock and roll shotgun, for that plus 50% mag capacity, and I've added on the linked laser pointer to this weapon for the pulse effects, and you know, I use it to hit mobs or a hardened enemy to build up my heartbreaker stacks extremely quickly, and then I switch over to the kingbreaker for the real damage output. For the skills, I use the reviver hive, mostly because I roll solo, and then the second skill is really up to you. I personally messed around with the shield, striker drone, shock trap, and even the assault turret. And remember, between the technician specialization and the card TDI custom pistol, you are already at plus two skill tier, so your skills are not entirely useless. I've been asked to show my shade watch on previous build guides, so here it is for reference, and you're going to be getting significant bonuses for headshot damage, weapon damage, crit damage, and crit chance all from your shade watch. And between the gear, mods, and your watch, the stats on this build show up like this. Crit chance is close to the max hard cap of 60%. Crit damage and headshot damage are both strong. And we do have plus 18% multiplicative damage to targets out of cover that doesn't show on this stat sheet. Now, if you find yourself getting folded too quickly using this exact build, you could always stay with a few armor core attributes for more sustain. So instead of a 6-0 build like I'm showing you here, you could ease it back to say a 3-3 or even a 4-2 for more survivability. But as you reach each expertise level and start to upgrade the Heartbreaker gear set, you're going to pick up more base armor. And then maybe you should start to move your build over to this setup by gradually reducing the armor core and picking up weapon damage. Before I leave you on this one, I wanted to show you my previous God Rolled Iron Horse raid build using all the best gear for max damage with all maxed out damage attributes, the best mods along with FAMAS and strained weapon talent and with glass cannon. I mean, it really was the best build of the day. Max damage output is not even touching 1 million, even on crits. And now compare it to this Red Heart build, which is not yet fully optimized, hitting over double the damage output of my previous build. I mean, the damage difference now is just insane. Anyways, I look forward to reading your feedback in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, leave them for me and I'll do my best to answer them. Make sure to smash that sub button and ring the bell to receive all my upload alerts. If you could take a second more to rate and or share this video, it would be greatly appreciated. You can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and over on my community Discord server. Links to all my socials in the video description below. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.